All right. Again, welcome uh, to an Intact Cloud Night session. Uh, we are recording this, and we will make it available on YouTube for you guys to review later. If you would like to pop some popcorn, invite some friends over, uh, project it on a big screen, things like that, if you really find it that entertaining, uh, which we hope that you will certainly find it enlightening as well. So. All right, so as we begin here, um, we do use GoToWebinar for our presentations, so you should have a control panel on your computer there. Um, everyone will be in listen-only mode for the presentation. If you have a question, there is a chat box in the lower right-hand corner of your um, control panel. And you are able to go into the control panel and type a message. And for example, I am going to make sure that everyone can hear me. Right. So you should have seen that pop up. If at any point during the presentation you need to ask me a question, uh, you can certainly post it into the chat session there or post it into the questions. There's also a question section also. Um, point being, put it into that, and then when we get to the end of the presentation, I will unmute everyone. And if anyone has questions, we will be more than likely, uh, or we'll cover them at that point. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So let's let's jump in here. Today's topic is reporting, making the data work for you. Um, one of the things that I've always said as we uh, implement ERP systems is that it is no good to implement an ERP system if you are not able to report on that data when the time comes, right? A lot of information going in, nothing coming back out. It's really not doing you any good at all, all right? So we're going to cover reporting. Um, I am Philip Massey. Most of you have met me um, already. If you haven't, it's nice to virtually meet you at this point. I am the president of Massey Consulting, and I am an intact advocate within our organization and also um, an intact advocate overall. I think that the system is a fantastic reporting solution. Um, I will go ahead and tell you that I don't claim to be able to do it justice, but I will do the best I can to make sure that you guys are at least a few steps ahead of where you are when you started this process and that the hour that you're going to spend with me is worth your time. Um, I am a CPA, been working with NTAC now for about five years, and it is by far one of the best reporting solutions that I've ever worked with in my 20 plus years of working with accounting software solutions. And I know I've heard that same sentiment echoed by customers that we've had that have switched from other systems over into NTAC. So now I'm not going to bore you with a lot of PowerPoint slides. Uh, I've told a lot of people before, I do think that there is a law that says that whenever you do a presentation of some sort, you have to have some PowerPoint slides. So I've got some here, and we're going to go through them, but we're going to spend most of our time uh, in the intact system, which I hope makes you happy because that's what we're going to do and because I think that gives you the most hands-on working with the system. All right. So we'll go through a few things. We'll do some, we'll do some deep dives into the software, make sure that uh, what we're talking about catches on. And then at the end, we'll wrap up and we'll talk about our next upcoming CloudBite sessions as well. Okay. All right. So that being said, let's go forward. So I want to start with uh, a few things here that are some of the more common requests that both we hear as well as intact hears on a regular basis in support. And one of the first ones that we hear quite a bit is the report prompt. So it says a report prompt does not appear 
for user created financial statements. When I try to run my financial report, the report prompt does not appear, allowing me to enter departments, locations, the as of date, etc. Instead, the report is generated immediately using today's date. Okay, so that's that's a simple one. So I'm going to pause the slideshow here for just a moment, and I'm going to bring up the our intact system and okay so we're in one of our sample companies i'm going to go to general ledger and i'm going to go to financial reports so if you want to solve the report prompt problem if you're be if you're running a report and that report is not prompting you for anything um, all of these in this sample company will prompt but you guys know what I mean by the prompt. That's this window here. So if you skip this window and just generate the report, then what you are missing is if I go into edit on any financial report and I come down to filters. And I look here at the filters. So here's my as of date. And notice here's a prompt checkbox. Here's my departments and prompt and prompt for location. And then under the line here are the additional prompts as well. So if I want to be prompted for any of these particular items, I simply need to check these boxes. Now, I do want to distinguish that there are what we call super dimensions. And you've probably heard the term from us at some point in the past, super dimensions. Super dimensions are those in which you, you can do a few more things with in the intact system. One of those things is right here. So when you talk about dimensional filters in a report, you can include subs and you can prompt on all of them with some exceptions here. But do notice that running as individual reports is only available for the department and the location. So the department and location, as they're natively named, are the two super dimensions in the NTAC system. NTAC gives you the ability to run these as individual reports simply by checking this box. So that what you will get then is a location report for Dallas, a location report for San Jose, a location report for New York City. It will give you all of those on separate pages. Now, NTAC does have an idea, um, which is their official uh, feature tracking system that folks would like to have features added to the system. They call them ideas. And there is an idea out there to add run as individual reports to all of your dimensional filters. Um, so if you get a chance, head out to the customer support site for Intact. You should have a login to it. If you don't, let us know. And you can go out and you can find this particular idea and you can vote for it so that they add the run as individual reports to the remaining dimensions in the list. If you have any trouble finding that idea and would like to vote for it, just let us know. But this is how you do your prompts. So if I were to come in here, for example, for projects or customers, and then I save this, should have hit save and done, sorry. And then I come back out and run this balance sheet again, you'll notice that I now have projects and customers as a choice. So if I wanted to see things from our balance sheet perspective, which doesn't necessarily make sense for projects, I understand that. But if you wanted to add it to your income statement or something of that nature, that is simply all you have to do is check that box. Okay. All right. So report prompt next is I don't see the system reporting period called inception to date. Now, why do we bring this up now? Inception to date is a reporting period that is a part of each and every intact instance that will, as long as it's not a demo instance, so unfortunately I can't show you this. They're demo servers, they do not put the include uh, or the inception to date 
on them, so I can't show you this, but we can talk through it. So the inception to date is a choice um, that is available in your system. You may just not see it. And the reason that you may not see it is because there are a handful, I believe six, reporting periods that Intact includes but marks inactive. They don't know if you would want them necessarily or not. They're more generalistic reporting periods. So they let you turn them on. Now it's not well documented, so it's something that does come through support quite often. But if you will simply go, as it says here, to company and reporting periods, and then check the box at the top that says include inactive. And then you can sort by the status column so that the inactives rise to the top. You should be able then to make them active. Now, where would inception to date be handy from a financial perspective? If you're doing project reporting. And project reporting, you don't want to see year to date, you don't want to see month to date reporting, you typically want to see inception to date. How has my project done since it started? If we've crossed years, I'm not really concerned about that. I want to see inception to date based reporting. Okay. So that is a choice. It's something that you do have to enable in the system, but it is definitely there for you. So, uh, next financial report question, report by different dimensions. Is it possible to have a P&L or a P&L budget versus actual report show the income section by class and the expenses section by account groups? Absolutely. And this is, a out, this is an outstanding trick that a lot of companies don't really think about and to be perfectly honest with you it took me a while to be able to grasp this concept as well so the best way to see this is take an existing p l duplicate it because we don't want to mess up the one that you have for your revenue section on the rows tab set the detail level to summary and expand by class Select the level to show that you want displayed, and then set the expenses section detail level to detail. Okay, so let's let's take a look at this one real quick because, again, it did take me a little bit to uh, to understand this. So let's take a look. All right, so I've got a income statement down here, and it's a fairly straightforward income statement if I run it to the screen we'll see that we've got some numbers here for sales and we've got some numbers down here for general and administrative right so if I come in to that income statement then I go to edit the income statement and I go to rows so if I come in here to this particular area and I say that I want to choose summary and I want to expand by a dimension and I'm going to expand because I know uh, actually I didn't uh, put all that in under one location so um, and one department. I didn't do a very good job of pumping in my data here to give a, a sample. So, but you can come in, and I'm looking at the sales summary, hide accounts, expand by dimension, departments, and then you've got a choice here of how you show those different dimensions. So one level down with roll up is going to go one level down into those departments. If you've got uh, sub-departments or child departments, it will not pick them up. It's only going to go one level down. And it's going to show a total at the end. That's the with roll-up. All levels with roll-up will show any level of department if you go 10 deep on uh, child departments. It will still show them. And it will give you a roll-up at each appropriate level. All levels with individual balances will show you only the different departments. 
it will not give you any totals as roll-ups, but it will show all levels. Leaf amounts, to be honest, escapes me. If anybody's really interested in that, shoot me an email and, and I can um, recap that for you. It escapes my memory at the moment exactly what that is. Um, but you've got various different levels of dimensional breakdowns that you can show. But notice that this is a piece by piece section. So if I wanted to come in here for cost of sales and I wanted to show my cost of sales and I can switch dimensions. So let's say perhaps my revenue, I wanted to see by some customer grouping. Uh, perhaps my cost of sales, I want to see by a vendor grouping. Um, or perhaps I want to see it by different departments. Um, revenue maybe by location, cost of sales by department. Um, or cost of sales by department and then general administrative, I want to see by location. Okay, so I can pick these things and I can come in here and then I could also expand by dimension and I can pick locations. So I can mix and match what I have in the way that the different sections of my income statement break down. All right, so if I were to do a preview on this, So like I said, I didn't do a fantastic job of breaking out the sales into different departments, but here's here you can actually see the sales department. Makes sense for sales, right? And then you can see no department here. Now, it will give you a no department choice so that if you have made any sales and you did not pick a department, your total sales value number will still be correct. Uh, it's just showing you also here that some of these were not tagged to a department. Notice under general and administrative, here's my different locations. So I've got the ability to use different types of breakdowns with my information here. And uh, again, I can get really specific with this. I'm showing this at a GNA level as a total but I could also, when I create my account groups, I could create groups underneath GNA and have specific groups for printing expense. And I want to see by location who has the most printing expense or postage expense or whatever it may be, salaries, wages, things like that. I could look those, I could list those out by department, by location. I can flip-flop all of this as I build the report, and it gives me a tremendous amount of flexibility in how I show my data. If I take this back to show accounts, for example, and show details, and I hit preview, which I hope and we'll, we'll come back to that. But um, So here's the income statement, and at the top, I'm showing sales by department, and at the bottom, I'm showing just accounts. Right. So if your departments, uh, you could you could show your sales by product line at the top, and then you could uh, put everything down into the bottom in accounts. Now, one of the things I was about to say, I do hope everyone knows about these buttons up here at the top. The preview will give you a live report HTML version. You can get a printed version or an Excel version. This will allow you to see if the changes that you're making are the changes you want to make. And if they're not, then you can hit cancel. If you preview it, run the report, like it, then hit save and do a little bit more. Preview it again. If you don't like it, hit cancel. And that's an easy way to make some adjustments and changes to reports without the danger of messing up the report that you really like and really need. Now also do remember there is a duplicate button here. So if you're making any of the changes that we talk about today, you can duplicate it and it's a really, really easy process. It's income statement and then you just give it a different name. 
and now you're working with you have an income statement three that you can go in and edit and you leave income statement alone okay all right so what's next Reporting percentages, reporting percentages. Before I jump into this, I do want to launch a quick poll. So if you guys would uh, look at your screen here, and it's just a simple yes or no. So if you would answer that for me, I would appreciate it. All right, so we got 100% voting, and um, it looks like we have 57% yes, 43% no. So we've got a good mix of experience, all right? That's creating a financial report from scratch, and that's good. That's good. So now one more question real quick, just again kind of gauging everyone's experience. So if you would, let me know there. And almost. Just whether or not you have edited an existing financial report. All right. So not quite everybody, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it off there. And it looks like 83% have, 17% have not. So. We've got a good mix of experience. We've got some that are completely new, and that's wonderful. Uh, wonderful from my standpoint, because you're gonna believe anything I say, right? You don't really know any different, which is good. But um, I'll always try to steer you in the right direction. So um, it does look like we've got a lot of experience with editing existing, but kind of 50-50 with creating one from scratch, okay? So um, let's talk about reporting percentages. Um, reporting percentages are very useful in reports. In most cases, you talk about percent of revenue or percent of um, cost of goods sold, uh, percent of certain types of expenses, things like that. Uh, the most common is probably percent of revenue. You know, what's my product sales as a percentage of total revenue for the company, subscriptions, and things like that. So there's really two ways to create a percentage calculation. Um, you can do it using a computation, or you can do it using a percentage of actual uh, in the column itself. Okay. So there's two ways to do it. Um, one does give you more flexibility than the other. If you do it using the computations, for example, you could do multiple percentage calculations. So let's say you wanted to see revenue uh, as a percentage of revenue, and then maybe you wanted to see the revenue as a uh, uh, percentage based on customer or something like that, so uh, or product line or something of that nature, department, whatever it may be. You can actually do multiple percentage calculations if you use a computation. If you do the percent of actual, then you are limited to one computation. Okay. So that's, that's kind of the distinguishing difference between those two. All right. So here's an example of a P&L report. We've got month ending 12-31-15, and we've got revenue and percent of revenue uh, going down the right-hand side beside it there. So using a computation on actual, um, you would um, set up a column type for computation on actual, create your computation, point it to a particular column, and then the rest of this is, is very similar to what you already know. Okay. Um, if we take a look at the computation, for example, uh, it would be 
created and you would say net income divided by revenue. And then that's going to cascade down the rest of the list here, but you would be able to change that if you wanted to within your environment so that perhaps cost of goods is a percent of cost of goods, not a percent of revenue. Um, what we have done here is uh, it's an additional column, computation on actual, with a computation on column three, and this is multiplying the net income loss account group by 100%. So what we're doing is we're taking this um, computation and we're going to multiply it out by 100 uh, not 100%, by 100, so that we actually get a percentage value that looks correct. Right? So we have 3%, 22%, 45%. So this is our ending net result. Okay. All right. So let's, um, let's hold off on that for just one second, and let's jump back over into the uh, intact program. And if I go to income statement percentage, I'm going to go in and edit this report. And if we'll look here, this is the simple way of doing it. And I do have another one with the computational way of doing it. So what I have here is under basis for amount, and you can see there's sales, there's cost of sales, and there's G&A. If I look under basis of amounts for sales, then I can come here and pick as a percentage of sales. For this one, I say as a percentage of cost of sales. Okay. Then when I come to columns, all I really have to do is put in a column that says percent on actual, and that allows me, or that tells the system, to say these are my actual numbers and these are my percent on actual numbers. And it's going to use the percent calculation that I have set up here in my rows to determine how that percentage is calculated. So in other words, let's run this report. And if you'll see, there's sales, 34,148. There's management fees of 11,568, billing revenue, alarm accessories, and surveillance revenue. And over here on the right-hand side, you've got the percentages, and it's calculating up to 100%. Um, general and administrative, we did not uh, come in and put anything under the GNA so that we could calculate any percentage of for this. Um, if we wanted to do that, then we could, for example, come here and select as a percentage of, and we could either pick sales, we could pick whatever we wanted to. I'm going to put general and administrative, and then we can do a preview and we can see what that report would then look like. So now you can see from a standpoint of general administrative expenses, 71% of our expense has gone to rent. Okay. So that's the simple way of doing it. And that is, it's pretty simple. You know, it restricts you to this, this one particular calculation methodology. So you're going, for these, you're going based off sales. For this, you're going off G&A. And that's all you're going to get out of this. But if that's all you need, it works beautifully. And it's extremely easy to set up. Okay. If, however, you have a little bit more complex needs or you want to plan for slightly more complex needs, then we can come in and we can do uh, a computation. 
So if I go to my rows, here's my sales and my cost of sales, right? Still have these in here. But what I've done from a column standpoint is I have a computation. So here's my computation one on column two. If I click on it, then this opens it up so that I can see the different calculations based on the columns, right? If I go to my computations, this is my computation one. So what I'm doing is I'm saying for net income, divide net income by net income loss, gross profit by gross profit, Sales by sales, cost of sales by cost of sales, and G&A by G&A. So essentially getting the same thing. So let's preview this. Okay, so here we have that this is not exactly the type of number that we want to see, right? Uh, we would know that this is 34%, 12%. And we know this is 100% here as well, but maybe that's not the best way to present it on a polished financial statement. So let's come back in here. Let's add a computation to the right. And let's come in and let's say net income loss, we want to multiply by 100. Oops, sorry, not an account group. You have to put in a constant. And that's going to fill that in all the way down the page. So this is simply then going to do take computation, gives you the, the ability to multiply something by 100%. So if I come back over to columns, I would then add a column to the right. We're going to do another computation on actual. We're going to pick computation two, and we're going to apply it to column three, which is then going to make us multiply by uh, 100 times this previous computation that we had in column three here. Now, if we're doing this, then we don't really want to show this column. So we're going to hide this column so that it doesn't show. If we then preview, we should have exactly what we had in the other report. So again, if you only want one type of computation, then that is definitely the way to do it would be the first way, where you simply designate it within the column setup and the row setup and you're done and use that percentage of, of actual and you're done. However, again, what this computation gives you the ability to do is if I wanted another column, and in this particular column, I wanted to say divide by the account group and use sales for everything, or Let's say that I have um, a, a number of nursing home facilities that I manage, and I have to track the number of beds in use. Um, I have to track the number of nursing hours, things like that, and I need profit by bed or profit by room that we have in use. I could come in here and I could create some statistical accounts in Intact to track the number of beds in use. Um, and then I could use this in a column computation to show not only revenue and percentage of revenue, but then revenue per bed. Um, let's take it from a standpoint of rooms rented. Let's take it from a standpoint of, of homes sold. Let's take it from a standpoint of product sold, number of, of software products sold, number of projects completed things like that. Um, any of those types of things, hours worked by employees, any of these things you can use as statistical accounts and then come in here with these computations 
create your account groups, come in here with these computations, and do real math based on the values that are in those statistical accounts. Now, the only thing to remember is that if you're looking for a percentage, it is best if you come here and you set your computation up to be a constant and your variable of 100, right? And then we'll say that. So we've created four of these. I'm going to go back to my columns. I'm going to add a column to the right. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say computation on actual. I'm going to say computation three on column two. We're going back to our actual numbers. And then I'm going to add another column to the right. And we are going to do another computation. And we're going to say computation four because, again, this is one of my 100s, which Truthfully, I guess we could go back and say computation two. So I could just use that one computation column over and over again. I wouldn't have to create that fourth one. Uh, I would not have to create that. I could use the same one. And then we could say computation two based on um, column five. And then, of course, I would come back to column five, and I would hide column five. And then if we preview this, so we've got different percentages down here. These are the same because in the top, we always compared by revenue. Down at the bottom, we're comparing by um, sales. Okay. Now, just a couple of little things here. I would recommend, of course, that if you come back into the report, we have uh, the title of this column set to be computation on actual, so we could say percentage of section, perhaps, or however you wanted to describe it. And then if we come over to this column, we could say percentage of revenue. If we then preview this and see, we should see our columns showing a little bit more uh, correctly. So again, using the computation methodology, that gives you the ability to do multiple different types of calculations based on number of rooms rented, homes sold, products sold, projects completed, uh, project man hours worked, things like that. Okay. Um, all right, so play from current slide, click that button. All right. So here again, we're showing the, the basis for amounts. And this is where we went in and put in as a percentage of revenue. So we saw that. And then you come in on your percent of actual. And then that gives you the numbers. So a much easier way of doing a percentage of revenue straight calculation. right? And, and even if you're doing a column for actuals and a column for percent of revenue and a column for budgets and percent of budget and stuff like that. That's an easier way to get that accomplished is to use the column headings percent of actual and percent of budget within the system. But if you want to do some things that are a lot more complicated, then the com computation columns um, offer a lot of flexibility. And of course, you can vary the basis, as it says here. Default from group revenue products, default from group revenue sales, here's revenue consulting, etc. Right? So you can change that around. And if you do that, then you begin to get different columns like this. And this shows you, too, your month ending, your quarter ending, and your year ending. Right? So, and let's look at that real quick, if I end the slideshow here. So, all we have right now are current months. We're looking at current month numbers all across the board. So we could take this, um, we could take this, we could replicate it, we could do current month, uh, current quarter, current year, and put all of this again in a financial statement just like this one. 
Um, we could add columns to the right to this one to be able to capture this information. Uh, we can also expand. So if we were to say um, current year, and then we were to come down here to expand time period quarters, set that, then we would want to come here, expand time periods. Whoops, okay, that one's, oh, uh, that's the, okay, that's going to follow the other um, piece of the puzzle there. So if we come here and we do the review, So you can see the different quarter endings here. And then we come over to the month ending and the percent of revenue. Okay. So you've got the ability to expand your periods out in here as well and really do a lot of, or really achieve a lot of flexibility within these um, reports as well. So you can expand it out, you can do it manually within the system, uh, either way that works for you. Um, here's profit and loss. Now here's one additional thing to show you. So notice that we're only showing a percentage in the cost of revenue section. Maybe you don't want a percentage up here at the top. So what do we do? We can pick a percentage of actual and as we know that will calculate our value but then we can combine that with a computational column and in the cost of revenue section we simply put multiply by one. We don't put anything in the revenue section, we don't put anything in the operating expense section, we only put it in the cost of revenue section and then here for the percent of revenue, computation on actual, and we show computation one on column three. And then we get what we're looking for. So again, we have what you don't see behind the scenes is you have a month ending here that you do see, um, obviously, rough page. You have a percent of actual that calculates against cost of goods sold. That's a hidden column. And then you have a computational column that multiplies the cost of revenue section only by one, and in other words, then prohibits values from revenue and operating and other income from showing and only shows in the cost of revenue section. So that's also a great way to show perhaps uh, revenue by uh, rooms rented, number of rooms rented or anything like that and only show those numbers in here at the top and not cloud the rest of it with zeros or numbers that don't mean anything. So this gives you that ability by doing the multiply by one in a computation, multiply by one gives you that ability to limit where the numbers actually show up in the system. Okay. All right, so reporting a single account's value in a column. Issue is that rows are reporting on an account group, but need is for an isolated account in a column. Uh, there are several ways to do this. This option uses simple math, and that's one of the real keys for presenting the financial statements inside of Intact and the way that these things are done. It all boils down to simple fourth grade math. You're doing your, your plus, your minus, you're dividing, things like that. You're working with your columns. There may be some hidden columns, and there may be multiple hidden columns to get you to where you want to go. But it's really just a matter of moving your way through those accounts. Okay. So what we mean with this one is... Um, the end result desired here in this case is that this is a uh, company that uh, is a nonprofit 
um, and they have contributors, and they are looking to see how many contributors they have, how many of those contributors are giving into certain areas of the organization. Um, think about this from a customer's standpoint, though. How many customers do we have? How many customers are contributing to the different types of revenue that we have, right? So um, you've got, uh, you're a services company and you do work for governmental customers, you do work for uh, private industry customers, you do work for federal government, you do work for state government, and you do work for different types of industries within the, the private sector. So you would be able then to tally those uh, customers and you would be able to utilize that to get an average revenue amount for your different parts of revenue, right? Um, different types of revenue, services revenue, things like that, and be able to calculate the average dollar amount received based on the number of customers that actually made purchases uh, from you in those areas. And that's, that's a pretty cool feature to be able to do. So simple computation or simple math to isolate the number, do a computation and hide the column. So we're creating um, for this, we need to create some statistical accounts and statistical account groups. So we would create an account here this 9300, whoops, I drew through it, sorry. So we'd create that account, and that would be where we would put in uh, our number of donors that we would have. Now, in the latest release of Intact, as a side note, they did give you the ability to auto-increment these some of these statistical accounts. So let's say, for example, you're tracking the number of customers you could um, set up Intact so that when you add a new customer to the system, it automatically increments the value in the number of customers that you have in your statistical account. So you add two new customers this month, 10 new customers this month, your number goes up by two, goes up by 10. You do have to put in a beginning balance. Intact will not go back and see how many customers you have and give you a beginning balance it would be able to increment that beginning balance going forward. So here in this case, perhaps we have that turned on for our donors. And then we come and we create an account group called donors, and it includes the statistical account for donors. Okay. So we create those, and we would need one statistical account group for each of the different donor types that we want to keep track of. We want to create a computation here where we um, simply pull in the donor into the computation so that we have that to use in our financial. We're going to set up this computation on actual so that we're using the computation in a um, financial statement. Um, summary on columns. So what we're doing is we're taking, we're, we're isolating down to the number of donors that we actually have in the system, right? And so what that's going to give us is a total number of donors. So we can look at this and we can say that we've added all of our donors into the system 24,799 donors. However, that's not what we really wanted. So to get this, we need to um, create additional revenue account groups, statistical account groups, and add different computations for every revenue account. So what we did previously was we created um, one group here with all of our donors. We took that one group, we put it into a computation, and then we created the, col the column to house that computation, but we didn't get the exact number that we were looking for. So the key here 
is that we want to create a group of statistical accounts for each of these levels, building revenue, um, overseas revenue, music equipment revenue, whatever your choices may be. Um, new home sales, existing home sales, um, different types of products, Dynamics GP versus Intact versus Sage, whatever it is that you carry within your organization. Create those groups and then you can utilize those groups to get down to a true number of contributors in the system and give you a true average revenue from those numbers of contributors. Right. You would of course go back in and hide some columns and only show the different things that you actually need to show within the intact system, but you know, that gets you down to a clear, concise report that gives you the information that you need. Okay. All right, so we've talked about um, percentages. Uh, we've talked about some different information. Um, I think, yep, all right, so I'm going to minimize this for just one second. So we've talked about a number of different things um, within here, and of course, we only have an hour to go through and, and 50 minutes or so in reality, so it's a little bit of a short time frame. But I think the key takeaways from this for you to remember are one, your computations and what computations are for and what computations can do um, within the NTAC system. So you create your computation and then you use your computation in a column. And that allows you to multiply, divide, add, and subtract different information. And you may very well have a number of columns within your financial report that are hidden and that you do not see and they help you to work your way to the column that you're actually looking to produce. So keep in mind as you're building reports, as you are utilizing the NTAC system, that a lot of what is done within the NTAC system for financial reporting, it's extremely powerful in what it can do but a lot of what it does is really based on simple math. It's not terribly complex. It's just a matter of having the right computations and the right columns in the right order and presenting the financial statement that you're looking for. Keep in mind that you can change things so that as you have your rows that you're working with in the intact solution, you can change how those rows are shown. You do not have to have the same formatting throughout the entire financial statement. You can really jazz it up and show different things in different sections. And it's just simply a matter of setting it up correctly and having it show on the financial statements the way that you want it to show up. And lastly, we talked about at the beginning, just as a reminder, don't forget that filters do exist and you're able to set up prompts for those filters so that as you run different reports, you can have individual reports prompt for different things. Okay. All right. So uh, a couple more slides and then I will uh, open it up for questions, although I don't see any at this point. Um, I do see a couple of confirmations that you guys could hear me earlier, so that's great. Uh, but I don't see any questions, so if you have any questions, please do put those in. Um, let me put this back up here. So I do want to go ahead and advertise. We are having a special Cloud Byte session. Normally we have these monthly, but we are doing a second one in the month of May because there is the Intact 2016 Release 2. And that Release 2 is coming out this weekend as a matter of fact. So when you guys come back in to work on Monday, you're gonna have a few new features in the NTAC system. If you wanna know what those features are, then we are having a special session on May 25th. Jim Stabanis is gonna be leading it. Uh, it's at 2 p.m. Eastern, and it's all about release two. We're gonna tell you all the new features and functions and all of those things. If you wanna register for it, which I do hope that you do, 
please visit our website, MasseyConsulting.net, and the calendar page. And there is a link at the top of the website for the calendar as well. But if you go straight to that URL, you will see a Cloud Bytes logo and click there and you'll be able to register for this May 25th session. Our next uh, session for Cloud Bytes, I do not have it up on the website yet, but I will get it up in the next couple of days. It's intact tips and tricks. These are general tips and tricks. This is going to be a fast paced session because we are going to cover a lot of ground with this. We're going to talk about dimension groups, um, account groups, custom fields, data importing tips and tricks, record ID creation, uh, and, and more um, within that one hour time frame. So we're going to move through a lot of stuff, but we will have the PowerPoints that you'll be able to refer back to as well as we'll be recording that one, that session as well. Okay. Contact info if any of you don't have it. If you want to get in touch with me, you can do it here. We also do have a contact us page on our website if you'd like to reach us there. And lastly, thank you for attending. Um, I do see that we have a question. All right. I have a, okay. So we have one person asking. I have a column that is the total of the previous columns, but in that total column, I have a row that should be a percentage formula other than a simple total like the other rows. Not sure how to accomplish that. Um, I don't think we have time left in order to get that, but I do have the question uh, for this individual and I will take it down and we'll create a support ticket and get back to you. Um, and if anyone else is interested in the uh, resolution of that, we'll be glad to share that with you as well. Just drop me a note. Um, again, my email address is here. Uh, if you, you want to get the answer as well for this particular one, then just uh, let me know. And um, I do see one additional comment here. Go Tar Heels. Yes, that is great. I like that. Uh, they got some nice UNC fans within our client base here, so that's great to hear. So thank you again for your time today. I really appreciate it. If anything comes up after the fact, you do have my email address. You do know how to get in touch with us, and we more than welcome the questions. Uh, and if you need any more detailed information about what we've talked about today, again, an hour is not a terribly long time to get into too many details, but if you do have questions, please let us know. We are always here for you. All right. So with that, I'm going to stop the recording and end the session. And you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you.